Okay, let's say you get a sick rabbit. Okay, so we all, you know, the rabbit is not eating. Maybe that's all that we know about it. And we're going to say, again, you are going to be more exquisitely aware of a sick rabbit because you're experienced. And I'm dealing with so many people that need that education that you're talking about who have no clue that the rabbit's sick, who's used to a dog who's not eating. A dog could, it could be five days. I mean, you don't want it to get dehydrated, but the way a dog is set up, a dog will, you know, the ancient dog will eat prey and not get more prey for five days. So their system is set up. They don't need to eat. They are fine if they don't eat for five days and they'll recover. A rabbit will obviously go down the tubes really fast if they don't eat in five days. Um, but let's say we, we don't know how long a rabbit has been eating. When I counsel people who have new rabbits and never had a rabbit before, I say, if your rabbit stops eating for two hours, this could be an issue. Once you get to know your rabbit, obviously, they theoretically should be eating in the morning at night, but we know that. That's long, long been um, bred out of our rabbits, I think. Uh, so what, what should your rabbit veterinarian do if they come in? You want to be very open-minded to allow them to do the tests that are necessary. Um, but some of the tests that are available don't tell us that much about gastrointestinal problems themselves. So you have a sick rabbit, you might want to do lab work. You're not going to find much in the lab work that addresses the GI problem directly. In other words, there's not, oh, GI problem causes this enzyme to go up. Not so much. You're looking for other problems that might have cause the rabbit not to eat, like a kidney problem or a liver problem. So the main reason you're going to do blood work is to look for other underlying problems and because anything could get your rabbit to stop eating. It doesn't have to be a GI. People come in, it's stasis. I don't know that it's stasis. All I know is your rabbit stopped eating. Could be the hairball, could be anything. And most of the time you're going to treat them in a similar supportive way. So you want to say, yeah, I'll do lab work, but you don't want to think it's going to tell you something that it isn't going to. Um, the other thing I just want to mention, I don't, I don't think I have a good handle on this as much as I'd like, is stool samples. Most veterinarians, including me, for years have sent just the stool sample we do in a dog or cat. It doesn't tell you that much in a rabbit. I don't see that many GI parasites in rabbits. Um, I don't know why, and I think it's because our stool samples are not designed to diagnose rabbit GI disease. Most rabbits, especially rabbits who have diarrhea, you're better off doing cultures, what's called an anaerobic culture, and they cost about $160. So you got a rabbit walking in and you want, you know, $150 worth of x-rays, $150 worth of lab work, and $150 worth of fecal culture, which takes like four days, and you got a sick rabbit, what's going to go by the wayside? So we don't know as much as we need to know about what tests to do on rabbit feces. I'm, and then I'm just going to leave it at that just because I think there's a lot to be uh, explored here. I've even talked to the specialists at the lab, and by the time I'm done, I'm like, I can't spend $400 checking this rabbit stool. Um, so when a rabbit has diarrhea, you're trying to distinguish which organisms should be there and which aren't. And in the, the whole list, I had a list of 40 organisms. I did not provide it during this lecture. but. Um, there are different ones than we have. We have E. coli living in our intestinal tracts, and that's a normal inhabitant of fecal material. But if certain strains of E. coli, as you know from all these horrific hamburger crises where children have died, they are pathogenic. Rabbits have a few of those guys living in there, E. coli and a clostridium called Clostridium spiriformi. I'm not even writing that down. But there's a few, and when things get out of balance, the bad guys proliferate and they produce toxins and that can add to your rabbit not making it. So you can test for those things but it doesn't, it's not practical. Okay, so now we're moving on to gastric stasis because that's, you know, the name for everything that's wrong with rabbits. Um, it could be just the diet and of course, uh, I know you're all on high fiber diets but carbohydrates are pretty much just not good for rabbits. Where would a rabbit in the wild find a carbohydrate? I mean, they might find a strawberry, um, but really they're eating hay, hay, grass, leaves, hay, grass, leaves, but not much carbohydrate. So their system, there's nothing they can do with the carbohydrate except create byproducts that are just not healthy for a rabbit. I remember going to one lecture by a rabbit specialist who said, feeding a sick rabbit carbohydrates is like pouring gasoline on a fire. 
So the trouble is you have a rabbit that's not eating and you want, oh, I've got to get to eat something, I've got to get to eat something, and you know, you get banana baby food. Mm -hmm. And that, it, it, it's probably worse than not feeding it. Question? Would you rather I wait till you're done to ask? <coughs> uh, I, you know, yes, I think so. Okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm easily distracted, so I think I'll, I'll <laughs> and I'm almost done, I think. Um, so basically, it's like, wh why would a rabbit stop eating and what would cause gastric stasis and what comes first? the diet, which we'll get back to, stress, pain, could be the teeth, could be getting arthritis, because the rabbit was getting old. Uh, kidney disease, liver disease, and those things again, why do you let your vet do blood work? You're looking for those things. Um, and so what happens? You get a rabbit that's not eating, you get a rabbit that's not drinking, you get a rabbit that's not pooping, you get a rabbit that's stomach to the vet feels kind of doughy is the word. Rabbit gets depressed, rabbit hunches over, rabbit grinds his teeth, abdomen starts to be painful, and they may or may not have diarrhea. So those are the symptoms that I'm going to get presented in an increasing order of seriousness. Um, I don't see much. There's a disease called enterotoxemia, and the reason you don't see much of it is it strikes rabbits so quickly they're usually dead before they can get to the veterinarian. You don't see it that often, but that's probably where clostridium, like that's what causes botulism, that's what causes tetanus, the clostridial bacteria are, are bad guys. And it's more common in baby rabbits, and it's, it's the disease that happens when someone gives the rabbit the wrong antibiotics. So you don't see it arising in a reasonably well-fed rabbit much, but the most common diarrhea I see is really the poopy butt, which we'll talk about there. Um, bloat is another disease. I don't see much primary bloat where the stomach just fills up. I haven't seen that in x-rays very often, so I'm gonna pass on that one too. I wanna talk about constipation because I don't think rabbits get constipated, and some of my references don't think rabbits get constipated. I have had rabbits return to me after they've spent a night in an emergency clinic where the diagnosis was constipation and where the rabbit received a, ouch, enema. Um, I've seen that over and over again. And hopefully the word is getting out, but rabbits who are not pooping are not eating most of the time. Um, the main reason a rabbit truly cannot poop is because there's some, like a tumor or a blockage or something's made it down there. And again, those things can be hard to diagnose. You'd have to do an endoscope, sending something up the rabbit's rear end. But most rabbits are not gonna get constipated. Their poops are this big. Like, what's gonna get stuck? They don't get big, wide, dried out poops because the shape is wrong. So that's something that I think you wanna just think, really? If somebody diagnoses constipation. Um, I'm gonna talk about poopy butt. Who here has seen rabbits with poopy butt? Okie dokie. Um, I get a lot of them, and I say it's a common thing that someone who's not a real rabbit savvy rabbit owner comes in. I just saw one last week, and seriously, it's like glue. I mean, people who try to clean it off, what happens, it gets in the feed, and then they clean off the foot, you know, they shave the foot pads, please don't do that either. Um, and what poopy butt is, is an abnormally produced cecotrope. It's a cecotrope that was formed wrong because the bacteria in there are wrong, the fiber content, it's almost always related to diet. So people come in and I'm pretty sure their diets aren't gonna be good. And sure enough, when I ask the questions, they're not. But I start with, and sometimes, well, I have someone in the audience whose bunny had poopy, poopy butt, but he had neurologic issues and could not clean himself. And so there's other specific reasons, but it just, it's, to me, it's like super glue. I don't think soap and water washes it off. And if a rabbit comes in for an office visit, and I have half an hour, I don't have time to, I can't clean that rabbit's butt off in a half an hour. I usually take him into the hospital, and the last one I had to just trim it. You have to watch clippers. Rabbit skin is like wet toilet paper, in my opinion, um, and it's just so easy to tear that the sequel is hard to manage while you're getting the food straightened out. Um, anyway, and ileus is another word for, uh, there's gastric stasis where stomach's not working right, there's ileus where intestines are not working right. It all pretty much goes together. And if you look at an uh, x-ray of the cecum, and I brought my x-ray book, so afterwards if somebody wants to look at pictures with me, I've got them. Um, the cecum should look like it's got food material in it. If it's a big gas-filled thing, and it kind of looks like a seashell, it's really kind of pretty when it's full of gas, you don't want it to be full of gas, that means things aren't moving. They're just not moving. Um, okay, what do you do when you get that sick rabbit come in there? And you could also have, by the way, GI obstruction, carpet eating, um, other foreign body eating, 
those are not, not good because in another animal, you'd go in and do surgery to remove that stuff. The odds of a rabbit surviving that surgery is not great. I did have one carpet-eating rabbit that <clears throat> the people could not afford to take care of it, and I ended up temporarily adopting the rabbit, and um, we just force-fed it, hydrated every day, and I think I had that rabbit for a month, and it finally recovered, and then I gave them their rabbit back. Um, but it can be just a long thing that, that the average owner would have a hard time dealing with. Better not to eat the carpet in the first place. 